I'm gonna need anybody with a bank account, young or old, to please go to your bank and ask them what their interest rates are for their TFSAs and their GICs. Hopefully you get a person who cares about properly explaining this stuff to a new person. A GIC is a certificate that you can buy, but you're not actually buying it. You're just investing your money for a certain amount of time where it's locked in, which means you can't take any out and you can't add any in. It's just a certain amount. They're going to ask what you're investing in. I said I'm doing it for tuition. I'm putting my money down for a year just to see how much it can grow and see if I can use it towards the next payment of tuition. In terms of a TFSA, that's a tax-free savings account. Now, the way the lady explained it to me was perfect. She said that a TFSA is like, it's like a filing cabinet. And so you can have different things under a TFSA so that they're not being taxed by the government. So I was able to open my TFSA and my GIC simultaneously. But a TFSA can also act as an actual savings account that you can actually interact with, like remove or add money into. When your money is in that GIC, it's growing at a huge rate. For me, it's like 4.2%. I bought a $1,000 GIC. I think the minimum is 500 I set that up last week and my money is now at $1,100. My lady was very upfront with me and she told me that this is what people with money typically do, but because of that, there's restrictions and consequences if you surpass them. She referred to a TFSA as a filing cabinet because you can buy a GIC, but you can't add any more to it. But what you can do is buy another GIC and you can buy as many as you want as long as it's under the threshold of your contribution room. A contribution room caps how much money can go untaxed in your TFSA. This is mainly dependent on your age, but it changes every year and based on inflation. As soon as you're 18, you have $6,000. Since I'm 19, I now have $12,000 of room. This is in Canada. Your contribution room is for TFSAs, but I think it also includes RRSP. Exceeding your limit and over-contributing money into these accounts works against you. They will You will lose money. So this shit is useful, but don't max out your account. Like, Don't add the most amount of money that you can, because what if you come into more money? If you do decide to max out your contribution room, all interest money that you make is not taxed. And you can also remove it freely with no issues. But if you take it out, you gotta wait another year to put it back in. Because you already maxed out your contribution room. You can even take your TFSA, your GIC, your RSP, whatever, and put it into a different financial institution. It comes with a fee, but like there's a lot of freedom with this stuff. Since the contribution room is determined by CRA, which also watches your credit, your room can also go down based on bad investments. And if you often lose money, it'll shrink. Does not mean you're hopeless. I just really want to share this because this shit is crucial and you can go an entire lifetime without even knowing that this type of stuff exists because of proximity to financial resources and literacy. So of course I'm telling you guys this based on me starting it and also doing my own research, but you should also do your own research. I'll update you guys in a year's time, but if you have enough discipline to not touch your money, even if you don't, just please try this out, please, or at least look into it.